Hi folks and welcome to Attica Armory. So today we're going to do another little cleaning video for you. This time it's the legendary AR-15 rifle. Now I'm going to show you guys how I learned how to clean an AR slash M16 M4 pattern rifle when I was in the army uh, using basically just a single bottle CLP. Of course today we're going to be using a vastly superior CLP uh, compared to the weird stuff that we got given in the army. We're going to be using our Attica Armory Citrus Powered Synthetic CLP. Feel free to visit us at AttagaArmory.com if you want to find out more about how it works. Now before we get started, don't forget to give us a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. Now the first thing we want to do anytime we're getting ready to clean a gun, we want to make sure that the magazine is removed. We want to make sure that the firearm is unloaded and we want to remove any ammo from the work area. Now in order to disassemble the AR-15 for cleaning, you want to make sure that basically that hammer is locked back in the cocked position and you just go ahead and pop it into safe and we can just take use these uh, little takedown pins here and we can start taking it apart. Now, some of you guys might have one of these uh, kind of field cleaning kits, and these are all fine and good for out in the field. Uh, we're going to be using very similar items to what you might find in a field cleaning kit. Things like a multi-piece uh, cleaning rod, various brushes, a little bottle of CLP, some patches, things like that. The biggest difference is that I'm going to be using a single piece aluminum cleaning rod, which is uh, my preferred method of cleaning whenever I can avoid using those multi-piece rods. And I've also got two different types of patches here ready to go. I've got these really thin, almost kind of a synthetic type material patch. Uh, these are cut down to size so that they fit easier through the 22 caliber bore. Then over here I've got some uh, larger thick cotton patches and I believe these are a 30 to 45 caliber cleaning patch. And we're going to use those for basically everything else. So let's go ahead and start with cleaning our lower. So I'm going to go ahead and remove the buffer and the recoil spring because every now and then it's a good idea to clean this out and lube it. I don't do it every single time that I clean an AR, but probably, you know, every three or four times I'll definitely remove this, make sure that's cleaned out. Or if I shoot in really dusty or nasty conditions, I'll just clean that out. And I'm just going to use a little pick tool here to compress that little little blocker there. I'll just go ahead and pull this out and we'll set that aside. I'm going to start off with a generous helping of CLP on one of these large patches. And I'm going to start with just cleaning up around the fire control group down inside the magazine well. And I'm also going to get up underneath my bolt stop just a little bit, just to make sure that it's clean and lubed. Now I want to uh, very carefully just kind of put my thumb over the hammer and release that hammer forward. And I'm just going to kind of clean up underneath and around the inside of the fire control group where my sear is at and all my little nitty gritty nooks and crannies. Then I'm just going to use that same CLP patch attached to my cleaning rod and I'm going to just run it right down into that buffer tube. Now I don't want to leave it too wet down here because it's just going to gather, you know, grime and whatnot. So I'm just going to use a dry patch and kind of sop up some of the extra CLP. Same deal with the inside of the magwell. Just remember, it only takes a tiny little film of CLP to lubricate, so you don't want to leave this thing soaking wet and just dripping with CLP. It could contaminate your ammo. Uh, it could actually end up causing more dirt to be attracted to it. Really, you just need a tiny little film of CLP remaining at the end to provide lubrication. I'm just going to use that same dry patch and just kind of swab up some of the excess CLP out of the buffer tube. I'm just going to use my same wet CLP patch and I'm going to clean up my buffer and my spring. Make sure those are nice and clean and lubed. I'm just basically making sure that I'm getting a little bit of lube on the entire spring on all the surfaces. 
Now you can definitely use just CLP to lube up your fire control group. However, there's a couple of spots that I do like to apply some grease. And let me show you where those are at. Hopefully you guys will be able to see this. So the first spot that I like to put a little tiny bit of grease is right down here where the, the engagement surface is between the bottom of the hammer and the sear. There's this little notch right here at the very bottom of the hammer. And that's where I want to put just a little bit of grease. And also to improve the trigger reset, I like to put a little bit of grease right under this hook right here. So if you go up right underneath there there's a little kind of hook shape and just put a tiny bit of grease right there and that should be good to go and you can also do that here on the hammer just right in there just a tiny bit of grease and I'm just going to apply a little bit of grease and this is actually a uh, kind of a mixed type of grease it's got wet lubricants and it's got dry lubricants it's got copper particles kind of like automotive anti-seize uh, it also has molybdenum and graphite and uh, this stuff we're going to be bringing this to market soon this is our own specialty super high performance grease i'm going to be using just a little bit of that in those areas that i mentioned and i'm just going to wipe away some of the excess using a dry little patch here we don't need a ton of this stuff and just work it in a little bit. There it is. Just a little bit of grease on that. That sear engagement surface and a little bit on the reset hook and we're good to go. All right, we're gonna go ahead and reinsert our buffer and spring and just make sure that your spring is fully seated all the way onto that buffer. And you wanna turn your buffer so that one of these little flat sections here is pointing toward that little retaining plunger so that it can kind of pop right over the top of it. Just like that. And then you can just kind of rotate it a little bit after it's in. Just give it a couple of little turns so that it's no longer on the flat side. The flat sides are up on the side. And we've got that main kind of lowest portion of that right up against that little uh, retaining plunger. You can also put a tiny bit of this grease right here, just ever so slightly. Don't want to muck it up too much. Just like that. And now we're pretty much done with our lower, so we're just going to set this aside. Now we're going to go ahead and clean the upper. We'll start by soaking the barrel. I kind of want to let that CLP get in there, start to kind of soak and work its magic, let it sit for a little bit before I start scrubbing. And I'm always going to want to clean from back to front. So we'll just use one of those small patches, and we want to apply quite a bit of CLP to that, to where it's like almost dripping off. And at this point, I'm just going in and out, in and out. I'm not going to worry about pushing it out yet. I'm just trying to get it wet. Gosh, this is so phallic. Like you could almost make one of those uh, Dear Penthouse letters by just kind of taking some of these things that I'm saying severely out of context. All right, so, <laughs> so here we go again. Lube it up real good. We're going to insert it from the rear and we're going to proceed to force this long shaft in and out multiple times, okay? All right, I got to get this out of my system. Now that I got this out of my system, I will start being a good boy again. So you can see there's, you know, a little bit of gunk coming through. We will get more into that barrel here in a minute. We're just going to leave that. Now, I actually like to use these little kind of plastic cleaning rods that come with Glock pistols. These are pretty handy actually for getting in here and just cleaning up the inside of this upper receiver. Also can get in there and scrub that chamber with a, a specialty chamber brush that has this expanded part for those bolt lug engagement area up there. So I use this to scrub my chamber and to scrub those locking lugs in there. So we'll start by taking an ample amount of CLP and we'll just kind of get in here. We'll clean up all the these sidewalls and that charging handle channel down in there. Get that all nice and cleaned up. You want to try to clean all around that gas tube. You'll see the little gas tube sticking out right there. What you want to do is try to get your, you want to try and get your patch up underneath it a little bit and just get all around it. You want to try to get that thing as clean as possible. Now once that's all nice and soaked in there, I'm just gonna use my chamber brush, whichever one you wanna go with, and I'm gonna clean out that chamber a little bit. 
and I'm gonna scrub those those locking lugs nicely with that and I'm gonna scrub those those little feed ramps in there there's two of them that all nice and cleaned up so now that our barrels had a chance to kind of soak up some of that CLP I'm gonna go ahead and scrub it with a bore brush and I generally for just regular cleanings I like to use nylon bore brushes they're just a little easier on the bore the brass type or copper type bore brushes are are nice for get some real heavy copper buildup or something like that you know you've got lead fouling if you're shooting solid lead rounds but just for general everyday cleaning uh, nylon brush is plenty and don't feel like you have to scrub the crap out of this thing I mean two or three times through there should be enough for just a regular cleaning And that should just about do it. Now I'm just going to use some clean dry patches and I'm going to just push all the garbage out the front. I'm not going to pull it back towards me. So I'm just going to basically push it through and then I'm going to remove the patch and just let that stuff come right out the front of the barrel. And I'm just going to do that a couple of times to get the bulk of it. And we're going to run just a little bit more CLP through it just to get any remaining stuff that might be in there. And we're just going to push some more dry patches through. We're going to probably do two more. We're getting there. And that, to me, is just about good enough. It's got just a tiny little bit, but really, I think for a fighting gun, that's clean enough. Just remember to leave your bore relatively dry. If you're going to store this gun for a long time and you're not going to shoot it, go ahead and just moisten that barrel up and leave it wet. But if you're planning on shooting it within, you know, a year or six months or whatever, in the near term, you're going to want to make sure that that bore is dry. Don't leave oil in there. It's, it's dangerous. You don't want oil in your barrel. I'm also going to take a dry patch and just kind of clean up some of the excess in the upper receiver, especially toward the front, because we don't want all those gases just blown back and sticking to a bunch of excess CLP. So we just want a nice thin layer up there. And I'm going to kind of dry out that chamber a little bit, the locking lugs. And that's it. That tiny little film that's left inside of there is all you need for lubrication. This is a potent synthetic lubricant. It's got extremely high durability. So just don't, don't worry about having to just goop it up really bad. Just the tiniest little film will do the job. All right, now that we're done cleaning the upper and the lower receivers, the barrel, the fire control group, let's focus on our bolt carrier group. And when you're taking this thing apart in the field, you've got to be extremely careful because there's a couple of tiny parts that if you lose, the entire rifle will become just a club. So just be careful. First, you want to remove your firing pin retaining pin. And that's one of those tiny little parts that you don't want to lose. So once you get your firing pin retaining pin out, you can drop your firing pin. Then we're going to take this little cam pin right here and we're going to turn it 90 degrees so that it'll actually fit, be able to get pulled straight out. And after we do that, we should be able to get our actual bolt to pop out. And that right there is going to be the dirtiest part of this gun. Just want to see some magic happen? Check this out. There is our filthy, dirty bolt. I'm really not even doing a whole lot of scrubbing right now. I'm just doing a quick wipey wipey. Look at how much just came off of that thing. And look how much cleaner it is already. Could almost throw that right back in the gun and just keep on going. Now I like to keep a few pipe cleaners in my field cleaning kit. These are pretty handy to have. Just put a couple of drops of CLP on the end of that. And we'll use the dry side to get the excess out of there. And just clean up our firing pin a little bit. And 
And I'm gonna go ahead and hit that bolt one more time, just for good measure. And I'm just going to use a toothbrush to kind of clean up those locking lugs, get any gunk out of those. Those shouldn't be crazy dirty because if you have a proper gas seal, these are kind of like little piston rings right here. If you've got a proper gas seal, you shouldn't have a whole ton of gases going forward of, of this area here. And then we're just going to clean the bolt carrier. And I'm just kind of doing a little initial cleaning with that same extra, that same wet patch. And then I'm going to hit it once again with a fresh one. Here's a little close-up shot of our bolt. You can see how nice and clean that thing got. And let's use a fresh CLP coated patch and clean up the rest of our bolt carrier. And there's one dirty bird right there. I'm gonna do that one more time. I'm also gonna clean that little channel where the cam pin goes. You can actually uh, use the back of your firing pin and that kind of cleans that nicely. Make sure you get these little channels nice and clean and lubed. And get those little forward assist ridges all nice and cleaned out. Now I'm going to pretty much leave this thing relatively lubed up like it is right now. But I am going to dry out the inside here. First I got to clean the face just a little bit more. Nice and clean. All right, let's just dry up the innards. So once again, just leaving a thin film of CLP on all the parts. And I'm gonna go, go ahead and clean up that cam pin. And I'm even going to clean and lube my little firing pin, retaining pin. Just because I like that little guy. And I can even just kind of quickly use what's left of this thing to kind of clean and lube my charging handle. I'll dry that puppy up a little. So one area that you're going to want to pay extra special care to is right in here where the back of your bolt basically comes out. This area is pretty darn dirty and it's kind of hard to get to. It's just a little bit of an awkward area. I'm just using some Q-tips to get in there. This is something that we kept in our field kits in the army. It's a handy little thing. And I'm just going to dry it up. Now that we're done cleaning the bolt carrier group, there is one last area that I do like to apply a tiny bit of grease, and that's inside this little cam pin channel here on the walls there, and just around the top of that actual pin. So let me get this nice and close for you guys so you can see it. I'm just basically greasing those inner walls there. Some of these little friction areas here. That stuff stays put real nicely and provides lubrication in the most critical areas. All right, so let's reassemble our bolt carrier group. Make sure 
when you're putting this thing back together that you look at where your actual extractor claw is at. You want to make sure that you align the cam pin hole on the right side so that the extractor is actually facing the ejection port. Otherwise, if you do it the wrong way and you've got your extractor claw over here on this side, it's going to want to extract into the wall of the upper receiver as opposed to out, out of that ejection port. Don't ask me how I found that out. So I'm popping that cam pin back in there and I'm just going to turn it 90 degrees. Then I can go ahead and put my firing pin back in. I'm going to go ahead and pop our firing pin back in. There we go. And make sure that you look at it it's kind of lengthwise like this. Make sure that it's not protruding at all as to not interfere with the operation and the cycling of that bolt carrier group. And just test it a little bit. Make sure that everything's flowing nicely. And I'm just going to put a tiny little bit of grease up on the upper part of this little cam pin here. Just to kind of coat the surfaces on the sides. You can see there some of the surface finish kind of tends to, you know, those are the parts that sort of get hit the hardest. And I'm going to wipe off the excess. Now that we've produced this nice little bundle of joy, we are all done cleaning. Let's go ahead and put this thing back together. And we'll just give it a couple of quick pulls, make sure everything's working. And there you have it folks, America's rifle, all cleaned up and ready to roll. And I'm just gonna give it a little quick wipe down. Now once I've wiped it down with that silicone cloth, I actually like to wipe it with just a dry terry cloth because, you know, think about it, this is mostly just aluminum and plastic with maybe a little bit of metal up here on the barrel. Uh, there's no real reason to have an oily surface here. It's just going to collect more dust, more debris. So I like to dry off all of the surfaces that are not like straight up steel. So there you have it folks. We hope this video was helpful for you to keep those ARs running clean, smooth, and at the ready. And with that, thanks for visiting today. We'll see you again next time at Attica Armory.